Okay, we're gonna uh, call the Public Safety Committee meeting together from February 16th. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderwoman Davis. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderwoman Boyd. Present. Alderman Bosley. <laughs> Alderman Muhammad. Here. Alderman Odenberg. Present. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Here. Alderwoman, I'm sorry, Alderman Page. Present. Chairman Vaccaro. Present. Tim Present, you have quorum. Did, uh, I couldn't hear. Did Alderman Bosley say he was here or I couldn't tell? It sounded like there was a noise, but I couldn't tell if he said he was here or not. Okay, so Alderman Spencer is not here. Okay, so next would be the approval of the minutes from the um, the um, February 2nd meeting. We'll take a motion. I move, to the minutes. I move to approve the minutes dated February the 2nd, 2022. Second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Madam Boyd. Aye. Madam Davis. Aye. Madam Howard. Aye. Madam Woman Spencer. Madam Woman Boyd. Aye. Madam Bosley. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Alderman Ryan. Aye. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Chairman Bacoro. Aye. Ten eye votes. Okay. Okay, ten eye votes. So what we're gonna do, at least at this minute. And then I might have uh, an older woman, Tyus, would like to speak. Uh, but I don't even know if, if that's necessary or not at this point. Um, but why don't, why don't I do this? Let me get this board bill out of the way first. Since it's my, since it's my board bill, uh, Vice Chairman Boyd, will you go ahead and... Um, take up for board bill 165 and I want to have the chief or uh, Dr. Dan Eisen speak on board bill 165 and what it's about. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, you are recognized on board bill 165. Uh, and if I could have the clerk read the little preset to 165. Board bill 165 introduced by Alderman Joseph Okoro an ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment authorizing the police commissioner on behalf of the city of St. Louis to enter into and execute an agreement with the RTI International to extract all crime incident reports maintained by the department for offenses occurring between 2015 and 2023 with specific data outlining the contract and authorizing the police commissioner or his designees to enter into contract and expend the funds to the extent received contain a severability clause and an emergency clause. Um, I, I would like to have the uh, police chief speak on that if I could. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. you. You're recognized. Thank, thank you, Alderman. Thank you, thank you, um, um, Chairman. So the, the Project Safe Neighborhoods grant and this, and this, this um, related um, contract with RTI is simply, it's, it's something our department has been involved with Project Safe Neighborhoods for probably at least going back to 2008 or so. And RTI is just, the, is just gonna be the, the, um, the, the repository of data that they analyze and prepare on behalf of the Department of Justice. So the Project Safe Neighborhoods Initiative is a Department of Justice initiative. Many major cities participate in it. We have, like so the St. Louis Police Department hasn't been involved for many, many years. This would have been uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or so times where we share the data. They, they take all similar data from other major cities. They compare it. They compare initiatives. They share initiatives across 
uh, uh, across the region or really across the country, see what best practices are, and they make recommendations for, for departments to implement. Uh, the, the best news, of course, is that it's, it's free to us. And in fact, there, there have been years where they actually, uh, through overtime and through other, other uh, funding, actually supported some of the initiatives that they recommended to reimburse for overtime and things like that. An example would be uh, walking foot beats. If they said that, um, hey, uh, many cities are doing foot beats right now in certain areas, uh, they have actually reimbursed the department for overtime uh, for foot beats uh, designated by uh, the programs that they're working on. So again, this is a, this is something that we've done many times in the past and we share the data and, and many major cities are a part of this project. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Would you like uh, the committee to take questions now? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm open to any questions. Hopefully the chief can also answer them because Surely. He's going to be more up on what this is about. Okay, we'll go down the road. Uh, Alderman Davis. Uh, thank you, sir. I don't have any questions. I'm very familiar with the program. Uh, have witnessed and experienced great improvement from the use of some of the suggestions. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Howard. This is just a clarification for those that may be uh, don't understand what RTI is. Uh, Chief, could you tell us what RTI, what the uh, initials stand for? Oh, now, let's see. I'm not exactly sure what the, what, what, uh, what the initials stand for. Um, what I can tell you is that the, the um, RTI is hired by the Department of Justice to do the statistical, to receive the, to receive the data from all the major city departments and then to analyze it. So our, our RTI is acting on behalf of the Department of Justice. The, the Department of Justice contracted RTI in order to uh, gather the data and analyze the data. So they're an agency that I guess handles data, uh, a repository? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I just get really, um, Acronyms kind of bother me when we never identify what they are. I don't know what RTI is. I'm not familiar with it. And I think that we need we need to know who we're dealing with. Yes, ma'am. Um, but I would appreciate if we could amend the bill and add, find that out and, and know what it is. And, and a, as a point of clarification, are we, we're getting the data from them and they're drawing some conclusions for us and, and making recommendations from this data? Yes, ma'am. They we're we're supplying the data, and again, not not only us, but many major cities across the country participate in this. It's a Department of Justice initiative. RTI is just contracted with the Department of Justice, but depart but but RTI is actually going to gather the data and interpret the data, and then they'll give it back to DOJ, and DOJ will use the, that analysis as part of the discussions for uh, many major cities across the country. So will they? fund this whole thing? Are they funding it? Or are we funding it? Who's, who's paying for this? Yes, ma'am. No, there's, there's no price associated with, with being a part of the program. So we don't, so okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't cost us anything, but I, but I mentioned there are, there are times over the years, they have actually, um, th you know, through, through federal funding actually have reimbursed us for projects that they're recommending. For example, uh, we remember a time when, when they were, they were talking about doing foot beats in certain areas and they, they had a overtime program that, that departments that actually conducted the foot beats could get overtime reimbursed them. So we've never had to pay anything. Sometimes uh, the, over the years they have paid the departments. Okay, I just uh, I just wanted clarification on that because you know we have people, some citizens that are listening to this, and I think it's important that they understand what what our police department is doing to ensure their safety. Um, yes, and what, what efforts are being made. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Alderwoman <clears throat> Spencer. Alderwoman Pam Boyd. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Bosley for putting in the chat what the RTI stood for, the Research Triangle Institute. And so that kind of helped us out to know what they were doing. But I guess uh, I heard you, Chief, say that it came from you. They used the data, and, and you kind of used an example as the uh, foot beat piece. And so, 
what how long ago was that or how recent have you all been using the have they been using our data to justify why we need these kind of outreaches in our communities sure i i, I ma'am I, I can go back as far as far as remembrance to 2008 it may be longer that we participated in this program but at a minimum 2008 Okay, and so is it current up to date now that you're using that data to, to say with that they need the foot beats and where they need it? Yeah, that, that yeah, the foot beats were, were, was an example of a recommendation that they made uh, some years ago. We just remember the fact that they reimbursed us overtime for that. But no, the, the, the project is ongoing, like I said, and we we've we've participated in it for many years. And uh and and it really what it tries to do is it tries to um kind of uh, gather best practices across the country. And so different, so they make recommendations to not only our department, but many major city departments across the country. Okay, and so uh, I'm not being ignorant. I really don't care about other, other areas across the country. I'm worried about St. Louis. And so have any of those programs been implemented since you all have been using this data in communities? Mm -hmm. What's the last time you all used that data and what communities did you use it in yeah i would let's see i'm just trying to think of, of a recent example um probably a, a recent example may be uh, uh efforts to uh do community engagement i know that was a, a big conversation uh, when i first became chief you know they they talked about uh the ability that if needed that they could help us with public service announcements and things like that in order to build community engagement would be would be a, would be a recent example that comes to mind, all the women. Uh, and of course, I you know I, I kind of founded my my administration on police uh, community engagement. And so uh, I, I, initiatives such as that have things now. Now I could I, what I couldn't remember is one where they paid us money uh, beyond the one where the foot beats involved. So mostly it's about suggestions and making sure we're consistent. So we compare our initiatives to the ones that are being recommended and see. I know that uh, a couple of years ago, they, they were making a heavy emphasis on uh, working with shot spotter and gathering shell casings to make sure that there's a lot of follow-up on shell casing gathering. I that that comes to mind as, as a recent uh, project. That okay. the, the, the shell casing gathering, uh, the follow-up uh, uh, through, through the Nibens comparison, those were something that, that was something that's probably uh, within the last couple of years, a continued emphasis on that. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Alderman Bosley. Uh, I don't have any questions in particular <clears throat> right now. My apologies. I am driving, so I don't want to turn my camera on. We've been having recent discussions about driving and right. making sure that we are being safe. So my apologies, Mr. Chairman, for not being in a specific place where I could turn my camera on. But at this particular time, I just would like to say that I appreciate the comments that Alder woman Boyd uh, just proposed, I think was a good line of question. And I think, you know, this, yeah, this that's the line of question we need to go uh, a little bit more towards. I appreciate the chief and everybody being here. Thank you. All right. Um, I just want to note, Alderman Bosley, if we take a vote on the bill, we won't be able to accept your uh, vote if we don't see your face. So uh, either you would have to pull over and, and make the vote or um, just pass. All right, so um, Alderman Muhammad. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have no questions for the chief. Okay, uh, Alderman Odenberg. No questions, thank you. Okay, Alderman Narayan. No questions, thank you. Alderman Page. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. I do have, uh, by the way, first and foremost, uh, thank you, Chief Hayden, for joining us today. Uh, I, I have one question. Uh, is the data that will be aggregated and presented by uh, the Research Triangle Institute International, will that information be made available to the public? And if so, A, how? And B, will it be made available in a geographical format to indicate uh, hot spots or areas? Chief, did you hear that? Yeah, yes, sir. He, he, the last portion, I think he might have been muted, but I, I think I understand it. 
I, I, I think I, uh, Alderman Page, I think I got, I heard most of what you said. Did, yeah, uh, I had a call came in that probably muted me on the very last of it. Uh, the A part was, will the information be made available to the public? And if so, how? And the B part is, will it be made available in a geographical manner? so that uh, citizens, Board of Aldermen, city agencies can be made aware of where uh, crime trends are happening in the city. Yeah. So the answer to part A is that the, the information that we share with RTI is already available to everyone in the city. It's on our website when you talk about the, the, the type of data they share. So it's nothing, we don't, we don't do anything special with it before we give it to them, but, but our, our daily tracking of crime that, that, that the auto persons and persons in the city can see at any given time is the same information that we'll share with them. So again, it, but it goes back, I think to 2017 or so. So we'll have to, we'll have to get all of it together and mm -hmm. send it to them. Part B, I, I'm not sure exactly what the Department of Justice shares outside of law enforcement. I'm not sure about that. In other words, I don't know when they, when they, when they, when they have uh, the various uh, regional meetings with the chiefs of police across the country, I am not sure exactly uh, what information to share with the public because uh, naturally we're not hosting it. Now, uh, to your point though, our crime analysis unit, when we talk, when we talk about mission zones and that, our crime, our crime analysis unit does a, 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 a definitely for our own department, does analysis that you all discuss with your captains all the time about hotspots. But it, comparing that across, you know, comparing that to Illinois and things like that, I don't, I don't know, it. I'm not sure exactly what they share with all the information that they get from all the major cities. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, as an aside, I will note that uh, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch uh, translates a lot of the crime data into what they call their, tra their crime tracker application, which they, public, uh, which they publish periodically. And uh, I don't know about others, but I find that quite helpful. Uh, thank you so much. I have no further questions, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Um, Chief, I, yeah, I have a, probably a couple of questions. I just want to make sure I'm clear because I'm reading through the agreement. Um, I want to go back to you said you've been working with this organization since 2008, correct? Yes, sir. I, could, I can recall, not, of course, not me personally, but I'm saying I could call our department partnering okay. uh, with this project for many years. Yes, sir. And is this like a renewable grant annually, like some of the grants that come down? Or is this, you know, every now and then we'll, you know, get awarded this grant to do some work? Yes, sir. I, I, I don't, it's, it's, it's not annual, but it's, it's, it's annually ongoing. I don't think that they ask for this much data, data, data every year. So it's, a, it's, okay. it's an ongoing project, an ongoing conversation, but, but they won't, I, I don't believe that they'll ask for uh, you know this uh, this is seven years they don't ask for seven years worth of data every year uh, and so uh, the, so we probably we probably I, I, I've asked the uh, our our grant manager he said we've probably we've probably provided the data about ten times over the years okay and let me make sure is this a grant or just just an agreement to give data. It's an agreement to give data and okay. the Department of Justice is referring to it as an initiative. Gotcha. Yes. And Chief, we, my understanding is we switched over uh, as far as how we categorize um, different offenses. So how, and it's probably another day, but how, how, how will you blend the data from before we came to the new system and moving forward? So I see this agreement goes to 2023 uh, of information. It says it's different parts. They're requesting information from 2000. No, that's just an example. 2015. 2015, to, it, well, the, it go, it's covers 2015 to 2023, but I think they're gonna take some data from 2015. Was it 2021? Yeah, I, I, the answer to, I, I believe the answer to the question, all, all man, is you, you're absolutely right that, that in 2021, we switched to a different reporting system. Uh, the the, the uh, national incident-based reporting system is what we switched to. And you're absolutely right. You cannot do an apple-to-apple -apple comparison from, 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 from any year before that. So what we have to do is give them both sets. 
We'll give them, okay. we'll, 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 it, it will not be on the same platform, but we'll have to give them both sets of data. But you're absolutely right. You cannot compare 2020 to 21 apples to apples. Okay. And uh, I what the other question was. Oh, so you talked about, I guess in the past, it recommended foot patrols. And who paid for the foot patrols? They paid for the foot patrols? No, what? what, what Yes, sir. They they re, from what I understand, they reimbursed us. So in other words, some of the some of the some of the some of the projects that they come up with, they actually have funding for. And so uh, more more likely than not, it's a conversation about best practices. Occasionally, it'll be uh, uh, federal funding that could be reimbursed. Well, I certainly support uh, foot patrols as best practices. I mean, I think I've been all of them in nineteen years. I've seen it one time. I think it was just a political stunt. But, you know, I would like to see foot patrols, you know, whether it's paid for by overtime or whatever, you know, in our distressed neighborhoods. Typically, our constituents, when we hear about foot patrols, they're pretty much in Central West End. I hate to pick on the Central West End, but the Central West End does have a lot of wealth and they have a tax base that pays for that, you know. But at the end of the day, we deserve some of those same services because whether we pay, you know, 30% in taxes to the city or 10%, we still deserve service. So are we still doing foot patrols outside of overtime? Absolutely. And that's something that we encourage regularly. And certainly mm -hmm. if you, if you, Alderman, if you haven't seen much, I'll make sure that Captain Mueller is aware of that. But no, that's a, that's one of the, the basic uh, community engagement tools that works every time. Uh, neighbors are always glad to see policemen walking and talking. And so we, we certainly will encourage officers to continue to do that. And, and, and let me tell you right now on the record, if they walked up and down Wales Avenue from Union to Hodemont, it would be very noticeable. So just putting that out there. And I could talk, I like Captain Mueller. I know some people have issues with him, but I think we have a pretty good working relationship and uh, I'm certainly willing to talk to him and hopefully he can get support because sometimes, Chief, I'm going to be honest with you. The captains want to do what they think is the right thing to do, but it's people above them that's not letting them do what they really want to do. So I'm just putting that out there. So if you guys could let loose sometime and allow them to, you know, really command, it might be helpful. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, th I think, like I said, the foot beats are, are the ones I think that we all, that, that like, again, that's, the ba that's a basic community engagement tool. Doesn't cost anything. You can do it while you're in service. It's probably one of the, one of the best community engagement tools out there. It's, Talking to I agree. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, questions from uh, members that are not on the committee. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to try to go in seniority best I can because I believe in seniority. Uh, but if I miss you, I'm sorry. But I'm going to go with Alderman Tyus first. Good afternoon, Chief and members of the committee and, and Mr. Vice President and Mr. Chairman. Um, I do want to say that I am fortunate that the chief and I have served together a long time. So we did have uh, foot patrols, especially in the what was then the 20th Ward. And even under the first war, we've had some. Um, in these last few years, it was limited even uh, vehicle patrol. We would have taken that. That got very limited. But before, um, for many years, we would see foot patrol up and down Euclid. Um, I tell the famous story of the chief putting a tent at uh, Norwood and uh, Terry and walking up and down, they walked uh, the 50 through the 50, uh, 200 blocks of St. Louis Avenue, Terry, Maffitt, Northland, and then uh, up and down Norwood. And to this day, we don't have the problem we had there. That's how effective foot patrol is. They knock doors, they talk to people. We used to have a drug corner there and, it's, and they used to keep the shoes hanging and we don't have that anymore. So we are fortunate, but I would like to see, I, I, foot patrol is a dream. I would just like to see more uh, car patrols now. We do have a big flashing red light on Kings Highway right now. So that's because they drive uh, 500 miles an hour. So, um, I want to say that you've been kind of effective with that shot spotter over. We haven't heard a lot in Kingsway East and West. We have not heard a lot of shots and we used to hear a lot. So you've been very effective. If you could just do something about that speeding, yes. my God, it is like uh, at two o'clock in the morning, the trucks come down uh, Kings Highway and they shake the people's house. My, I live two houses from Kings Highway and they shake the people's houses. So I know that to some people may not be 
um, important, but we've been fortunate. Um, the only person that got killed on King's Highway was the young man who rode a scooter in front of a police car going the wrong way. But um, any at any time now, somebody's going to get hurt between uh, Martin Luther King and uh, actually uh, all the way to West Florissant. Uh, they just drive so fast. And I hear every single time I go to a meeting, or I talk to somebody about the, uh, the speed. Now, I had brought up to the uh, public safety director before about uh, bringing retired police officers back. And I'm going to bring it back up again this time because I'll take retired police officers, new trainees, whatever. We need a traffic control. And I know that's down there on, on Broadway, South Broadway, Gravois, South King, South Broadway. Everywhere, it is ridiculous. So um, I don't have, um, luckily, except for those three murders on um, on uh, Code Brilliant, which came, I think, from that store. Um, you guys have been doing a good job in my ward, um, and I appreciate it. Nothing's perfect, um, but uh, I do appreciate it. And I know that if you had more police, you would put them out. But I, I, I'm going to ask one thing. Would you consider putting, because I'm not a fan of Mueller's, and you all know that. Um, would you com uh, consider what is it? I always have used to hear from Larry Arnowitz, the former alderman from the 12th, and even from the, uh, the chair about all these white shirts we have. Is there some way we could put more white shirts out into the community? <coughs> um, well, yes, ma'am, we can. We should. And we okay. Will. And and so I know that that won't be a great. That <laughs> I know that they will not be happy with you, but I, I when Larry, when um, former Alderman Arnowitz used to talk to me about the ratio of how many white shirts we had to people out on the street, I never understood that. And I know people want promotions and um, they may not think this is very important, but the fact that I've been here 30 years and we used to have such a good relationship with you, with Henderson, with Jockham Stollers. I know all the people that was there uh, with uh, 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 people in the 6th, 7th, and 8th. So we just feel like we don't see you all any at all. And that makes us feel disconnected from the police. And um, so I just, I, whatever you could do to take more people who got white shirts out and put them out in the streets, I think everybody on this committee would appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. In, in fact, there's a there's a promotional process with tenants right now. They will they will be assigned to um, um, patrol duties. Patrol. No further questions. Um, thank you, Mr. Ch Chairman. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alderwoman Evans. Since I see your hand up. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, Chief uh, Hayden. I. Uh, Remember when I used to attend your community meetings over at, on Union? So we go way back. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I just wanted to uh, comment about how you guys did used to do uh, patrol in the neighborhood. And uh, I can remember because I met you uh happened to see you and uh you guys were walking through the neighborhood and so i was i wasn't being nosy i was just being inquisitive and i was walking with you oh, man. Yes, <laughs> so that does help your presence uh makes a difference you know I, it really makes a difference when people see you in the neighborhood now uh I wouldn't suggest walking in the cold. You dry, dry, use your police cars, but w when the weather gets warmer, if it's something you want to do with some of our uh, neighborhood organizations where uh, we could have a, a night of uh, uh, meeting Absolutely. and interacting with the police, we'll walk. The, the organizations can walk through the neighborhoods with you. We would love to walk all about, with you. All about showing partnership. Absolutely. That's all I have to say. Okay. Um, Dan Alderman, Dan Gumper. Okay. Um, Alderman Annie Rice. No questions. Thank you. 
Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, you are recognized to Carol vote. Howard. Excuse oh, me. Oh, I'm sorry. I had your hand up. And oh, Pam Boyd. Oh, woman Boyd got a hand back up. I'm sorry. <laughs> All woman Howard. Um, thank you, Chief Hay uh, Hayden, for being here today. Um, I would just like to say that um, following up with the older woman from the first and the, I, I think the majority of the older women, older people that are on this call, we would and our people would more than appreciate, we would be very, very um, welcoming to any police presence. Um, we have problems. We have problems with speeding. And it's not just north side, south side, it's throughout the city. And I know that, you know, several of your men have been beat up on, but that isn't, that isn't the everyday Joe that's, you know, here in the city. I think that most of our taxpayers are looking for public safety and they want to feel as though they're being protected. So I can assure you that um, most I would say a majority of the people would appreciate the presence of a uniform in their neighborhood anytime, any day. Thank you so much for what you do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And I know that we we recently this year we started actually tracking what we're showing we're sharing with the community our, our different uh, uh, traffic safety deployments. And so that's something that that Dr. Mm -hmm. Eisman has really insisted upon. So each captain is actually sharing information about number of tickets written in certain places. I will certainly emphasize some of the some of the um, the streets that you all have mentioned, but uh, certainly visibly you should see a lot more uh, uh, traffic safety patrol. Well, and the damage and the risk to life and the lawlessness that goes along with the traffic violations. In and I, you know, it's people say the broken window theory is you know passe, but I I agree that once people see they're getting away with that, I think it opens the door. That you know, I'm I'm a true believer that. You know, you got to start with the little things. I raised my kids that way. And I think that we have to be attentive to the little things that go on in the community and move on up from there. And I appreciate that. And whatever attention you can give, I know you don't have enough officers to deal with everything, but you know, whatever you can do with the uh, limited resources you have and assets you have on hand, I'd appreciate. And I think all of our citizens would appreciate that also. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hey, all woman Pam Boyd. Uh, I I wanted I don't have a question or anything. I just wanted to give an example because I keep hearing how uh, people out there in the I say in the wind keep saying our communities are anti-police and they don't want the police. And so actually we had, uh, we've had several cleanups and Major Coons has done several roll calls within our areas. And when you see residents come out of their houses and go and hug those officers and tell them they appreciate them, that lets me know that is needed so bad because of COVID, and what's going on, our residents feel so disconnected. And when they actually get to have a conversation with the police, and I mean, uh, Major Coons was even giving out snacks and the residents were sitting talking with the, with the uh, officers. And they were telling them, we want you in our community. We, we don't want you to go anywhere. So I think that should be at the top of the list to make sure we bring that connection back because with the way this COVID has done our, our city, we need to bring back the TLC with the police and the community. And me like Alderwoman Tyus, see, I remember the sixth district. And I remember when residents in other areas said, how do you have such a good relationship with that department? And I said, because the police care about the people that they're serving. So I remember the Jock and Stalins, the Atkins, the Dobbs, and I remember those people that showed us what community was. So uh, uh, Chief Hayden, we need that more than anything to bring that back. And the white shirts, not just the lieutenants, I'm sorry. <laughs> Colonels, the chief assistant, anybody that got a white shirt need to be out there on the street 
talking to them residents. And what's so ironic, you set the tone because you get out in the street. So the day that you get out, you need to tell everybody, everybody getting out so we can talk to these residents. So I appreciate you and, and I hope the best, but we got to get back to what we were doing with our residents. No, that's, that's a point well taken on. When I, I, when I, that's, a, that's a actually an excellent suggestion. We can all get out there on the same day. That's a great, great, great suggestion. And what's going to happen, because when she did it on one block, people start coming to me and say, what's going on? What didn't happen? Who got killed? I said, nobody. They said, well, why are they over here? I said, they just coming talking to you. People just start coming out of their house talking. So it's a positive impact. It's Absolutely. not a negative. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Bosley. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, Vice Chair. My apologies. Um, so you may see my screen go in and off. That's only because I'm looking at the different documents that I want to reference. So my apologies if my screen is dark. I am not in any way driving. I am in my office, but I can't unfortunately look at the documents at the same time while I am on my phone. I think they, I think Zoom uh, blocks the screen. So can I be seen? We can't see right you right now. now, but go ahead. Okay, my apologies. When I say once again, I'm only looking at the the, the actual uh, that call coming in. Let's, I can't zoom on that phone. I just want people to know. <laughs> That's a landline. Uh, so uh, real quick, I just want to go to... Uh, the board bill. So I'm in no way, you know, just as a disclaimer, I'm in no way in any shape, form or fashion against us sharing information uh, with different departments, institutions or people that are uh, working towards ensuring that we have a better tomorrow. But at some point in time, we have to really understand as a city how important our information is. We are and continue to be the number one city when it comes down to homicides and uh, killings, things like that. You know, when you look at crime per capita, we're number one. And that does not happen, uh, not only by design, but without us at some point in time being able to, you know, we have to realistically look at how it is that we can take information, uh, information list, if you will. Information is the most important thing on the planet. There is no business, there is nothing, Nothing on the planet is not created without information. So the information that we have here in the city and the people who are looking at researching us, those places that we're looking at partnering with, we need to always look at what it is that we potentially have to also benefit from that research and those institutional programs. I know we've talked a whole lot about today, specifically about people uh, being able to kind of walk the beat. I was only 10 minutes late. I've listened to the whole thing and I've read this, this bill, which is only one page. So I'm just interested to some degree in how it is that this Research Triangle Institute helps individuals walk a beat, because that's kind of been the conversation. That's the first question. And I got you know a few questions down the line, but once again, I'm not against it. I'm just trying to, once again, get information. Yes. So, uh, yeah, Alderman. Yeah. So what what has happened in the past? Like I said, this is something I was I was trying to get as much history on this program as possible. Again, this uh, RTI is is only the repository for the data. They are they are contracted with the Department of Justice, and so the the this is all under what what they have been referred to as a Project Safe Neighborhood Initiative. And so uh, I, I as I've talked to people about this, I, I understand. That we have we have been engaged with the Project Safe Neighborhoods grant through through the Department of Justice for at least over ten years, and so we have we have they, it hasn't always been RTI, but but they have con they have used some agency to receive the data and interpret it for them for the Department of Justice over that period of time. I'm told that we probably have done this probably ten times over the years, but uh, again. When when it, uh, there there have been some years, and like I said, I I, I they don't actually, I'm I'm trying to think of some reimbursement program that's current, 
but certainly in that conversation, it, it was learned that um, that they have reimbursed us for initiatives that they were encouraging, such as foot beats. And so when when officers when they when we spent time some overtime doing some foot beats, some additional foot beats, we were reimbursed by the Department of Justice. So that's the that's the example of how they've helped. But I'm saying again, uh, as of late, uh, th there's been more sharing information about uh, uh, best practices than it has been reimbursement programs. And, so, and that's dope. I, I, I love us being able to share information across lines. That's very important for us. Um, uh, another question that I do have uh, particularly with us being able to share that information is, I wanna make sure that we all are clear in exactly what the RTI stands for. I don't wanna just put information out there and think that I know there's a whole lot of different uh, letters out there. Right. Somebody is at the base. Very persistent today. Uh, so is, is it the Research Triangle Institute? I just wanna make sure that we do have those, you know, acronyms correct. Uh, we are the government, you are the police, so you work with some of the most important people here in the entire city of St. Louis that are running things. So I need, you know, us just to be kind of on point when we're making decisions or passing anything or we're looking at, um, you know, acronyms that may or may not particularly be um, in correlation with what it is that we, we research. And so, you know, I, I may have gotten it wrong. I may have sent it out there and people think that is what it is and it's not, I just want us to be on one accord. Yes, sir. Was that it, Alderman Bosley? Sir, I'm sorry. Is that it? Uh, no, sir. Okay. I, I just want to, I, so once again, I want to make sure that's the, the, the right thing that we're thinking about, you know, number one, or talking about in particular. Is, is it the Research Triangle Institute? Is, is our, it sounds I, like what it is that we're speaking about. Yeah, interesting enough, uh, um, Alderman, the, the, web, the website actually has RTI International. And, and I think what, what the question was earlier is that what does that stand for? And I, and I, and I was pretty sure that it was regional, triangle. Okay. Yeah, that, so, so, the, so the organization goes by the, by the, by the name uh, RTI International. So now, yeah, and I'm and I'm looking and I'm yeah, research triangle international and I'm looking at the website right now. It, so the so the name of the organization is just the same name that appears in the bill. Okay, well, well I appreciate that. Yes, Once again, we had a few folks ask, and I just wanted to make sure that we clarify here on record what it is that we're talking about for you know folks <laughs> that are interested in what. I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. Yes, sir, and I was gonna say, and again, that they are they are contracted through the Department of Justice. Awesome. So uh, just just to clarify this, so, so they take this information and do, and do exactly what with it? Right, so that, somebody asked earlier about, you know, what information are we sharing, so we'll be clear on that. They, they're only getting the same information that our citizens get right now. Uh, but, 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 but of course, naturally, when, when you gather it and compare it across, you know, across regions, that type of thing is the work that they're doing. So they're analyzing data, but the same data that we're, that we're going to forward them. And like I said, we're going back to 2017 is the same data that's available on our website right now for daily crime. It's the same information. Uh, somebody else, uh, one of the other person pointed out, I think it was Alderman, Alderman Boyd pointed out that we actually have two sets of data. One will be 20. 21 forward because that's under uh, neighborhood, um, neighborhood incident based reporting. And then the, the other one was UCR data. And so those, those are two different data sets and they cannot be compared apples to apples. But we will send, we, we will send, them, every, we'll send them everything that they're asking for. Yes, sir. Thank you. So this is a bill that we've kind of, that we've done before. And I just want to make sure yes, sir. it's been, yeah, the data has been collected since 2017. So this is just a, you know. Yeah, this is a, this is, a, yes, sir. This is a renewal. We, we have, we have done, we have shared data to the, through the Department of Justice. And I, and I don't believe it's always been RTI as the, as the repository, but we have participated in this program as far back as 2008, maybe before, but that's the, that's the, uh, the, the current conversations that we've been participating at least uh, over 10 years. Understood. But RTI is a different institution though. Have we ever shared information with RTI? 
we know we we would have shared it with who, whomever the Department of Justice told us to send it to. Understood. So this is a Department of um, Justice request that they are working with, particularly RTI, to get that information. That is correct. Okay, all the way with that. All right. So my whole thing is, I know it. I know our, our information is extremely valuable. You are in a very valuable position for us to be one of the most um, highly crime-ridden places in the entire United States. People looking at how it is that can capitalize on changing some of the things or conditions that exist within the city. And none of that should happen, period, without every single one of us is being involved in the city government, making sure that we can articulate or at some point in time, um, I, I'm, I get residents and folks that come into my office all the time. My apologies. Sorry, I'm, I'm coming. This is whoever you are. Give me a second. All I'm, 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 I might add is, as you I'm know. I'm sorry, can you give me one second? Yeah, all I'm not. Yeah, Alderman Baza, I might add. Yes, yes sir. I'm sorry. You, you, you've mentioned a, a couple of different times. Hey, you know that uh, you know we were we were down 25 percent on homicides last year, uh, and and interestingly enough, uh, what's what's probably mo most interesting about that is that we were we were one of the lowest uh, major cities, uh, make one of the lowest per capita major cities increase than some than many of the others, and in fact, we we still are. And so even going into this year, so 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 you are correct that we have been per capita one of the one of the one of the most violent. The question is, are we still to date? Some of that um, uh, per capita data hasn't been published yet, but I'm not too sure. When somebody would say, if somebody would make the argument, hey, we St. Louis has been uh, top, you know, within the top five uh, per capita homicides for many years. I am not sure that that's an accurate statement right now because some of the per capita conversations have have haven't come out, but again, we were down 25% uh, uh, compared to many cities and many cities, we're, we're back to pre-pandemic numbers. Many cities have not recovered. And I would say even going into as recent as uh, yesterday, uh, a homicide comparison for major cities, we're doing the best and we're down 30.77%. And sir, when I say that is amazing, that's a point I wanna make in the next few coming years, pre-pandemic, after pandemic, post-pandemic, when all of this is over, folks are gonna to come to you. If you retire, whether you retire or not, folks are gonna to come to Mayor Jones, folks are gonna to come to the public safety director, different folks that are in access, what did we do to reduce the amount of violence that exists within this city? And our data is so important. It's so important to us that we need to make sure whoever it is that we're giving it to, if they're going to capitalize off of it, if it can be capitalized off of, or there is any way, period, that folks are going to her and sell out our information because that is what's happening across the United States. They're going out here taking your cell phone information, that your contacts, they're taking your Google information, your history, all of those things are being sold. That's the most important thing across the world. So I just, you know, once again, I'm trying to make sure that our information wasn't being something that was being sold to a different party which we had no control over. You already made it clear that the Department of Justice requested this. So this isn't something specific. Yes, sir. Sorry, phone, phone disconnected. Once again, this isn't something that we have to worry about not being regulated at the, you know, the highest uh, uh, you know, positions here within our country where we are looking at to ensure that we have some protection. So I'm, I'm definitely not making an argument to where this isn't something important for the, the Department of Justice. I know that people have been after the information that St. Louis has to offer for some time now. And we need to make sure that any people that are interested in the information that we have to provide, especially when we have reductions in our crime and we have individuals that are still in those positions who can tell the story on how those reductions happen. We need to make sure that there's analytical data that shows how it is we got to that particular point. And if we're going to give anybody anything that's not the Department of Justice, it got to be for sale, period. Our city is not for sale, but the infrastructure that exists here and the things that we change, it is. And we want to make changes across the United States. I just want to make sure the information that we can solidify, that we've changed certain things here that are data proven, it's, you know, it's about time for us to make sure that the right parties get that information and can utilize that in a way where it actually comes back and residuals to our city. So, you know, uh, like once again, I was 11 minutes late. I didn't get the first 10 minutes of the conversation. I wasn't 100% sure we were selling information. I did hear about 
and he, you know, he's talking about the Department of Justice. So I just, you know, wanted to make sure this is coming from um, that highest level of government. And if we talk about the, you know, DOJ, give give them whatever it is they need because they're gonna give us what we need on the back end when they look at that date and say that this. Excuse the speed and we got out of it. Uh, so yeah, they're gonna give us what we need on the back end after we send the data and say these are the things that we need to help us, you know, curtail some of these things that we're trying to uh, particularly uh, change within the city that are uh, you know, some of the things that we you know we see as being violent or you know against ordinance. And so I appreciate you, sir. I appreciate what you all are bringing to the table. This is something I'm not particularly um, not gonna vote for. When I read the, the bill at first. When I say I am not with selling our information at all to any third party, St. Louis is very special. And I want to make clear that to every single member on this uh, committee, our data is the most critical data in the entire nation. There is no other place in the entire nation that is looking and has the reputation that we have that can change things here. And folks want to see what it is that it looks like trying to take what it is we did here and make it happen there. We're always looking at Chicago and other places as being that place where we should pull ordinances from and different things that have changed based on the economic data. When you come down to people, civilization, if we the worst in the entire United States and, and have been here, then we have the best opportunity to be able to show that when we actually analytically change what's happening in these communities that are distressed, and you can actually show that folks went from killing folks for having jobs and things went from here to there. We're the most profitable city in the entire United States, being able to have a track record and what it is that we can you know, uh, potentially change in people's lives by being a, a cultural city that's able to inject ourselves in what the issue is. Everybody's trying to find out what the real issue is. They say it's poverty, it's this or that. It's communication and data. So we, I'm sorry, I had a call coming in. We have to make sure that our data is being given to those at the highest level of government who can give us back what it is we perceive in this city as people who can take our positions as being government officials, being the chief, being the public safety director, and say, hey, this is what we're giving you, saying that these are the issues. The Department of Justice, Justice is supposed to give us something back, saying when we got money, this is what you asked for. You said the solution was we need this or that, officers, whatever it is, we have now funding to be able to see whether or whether or not this works. So that's the only, you know, I'm not, it's not an argument or anything like that. I just wanted to make it clear specifically why it is, you know, my line of questioning was how it was uh, initially started. This is not against what it is that we doing. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we are not selling our data. This is not a third party. This is the Department of Justice that works with this third party to collect that data. Our data is very special to us. And anybody that's gonna sell it is gonna be the city of St. Louis, period, point blank, working with the Department of Justice. So this isn't an individual company that's coming in saying that these folks are looking for our data and they wanna go out here, research some things and come back to us and let us know. So yeah, I just wanted to make those things you known. That's how I initially kind of perceived it. So, um, you know, looking at it, researching everything and then listening, saying that this is a contract and reading with the Department of Justice. So I do need to know specifically in this bill where it states the Department of Justice is, is going into a contract with these folks. That's what I, I didn't see. Mr. Chairman, can you reference that part in the bill? Um, Cause I don't see the DOJ anywhere in here. No, it speaks about, a, it just speaks about a partnership with DOJ. Um, and I'm not sure if we have to have that in here. Is that after DR, oh, understood. Well, once you are the chairman, you know a little bit more than I do. If it's, if it's not necessary, fine. I, once again, my whole thing is making sure that our information is very, very protected within our city. It's very critical we protect that information. So, you know, I just want to make sure it's given to the DOJ, let's give it to them, but I don't see that in the be it ordained by the city of St. Louis that we go in contract anywhere with the DOJ. Uh -oh, no, Alderman, I, what, I, where, I would say if you, if you play page three of seven, it yes, talks sir. about the PSN, which is a project safe neighborhoods. And yeah, and maybe it, it talks about the US attorney's office involvement. 
So, so some of that is not spelled out, but that's all under the Department of Justice. So it's it's a comparison of regional information. Uh, it 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 uh, it says targeted by the U.S. U.S. attorneys' offices across the country, and so uh, it doesn't say exactly DOJ. Uh, but I, I, but to give you a little background, Project Safe Neighborhoods is, is a Department of Justice uh, promoted initiative. Okay, wait, great. Your, your page page three of seven, top paragraph. All right, I am looking. One second, I'm looking at it now. Is it, the first line says the goals of the PSN evaluation. That's Project Safe Neighborhoods. Project Safe Neighborhoods is a Department of Justice initiative. All right, so once it, so I'm looking at it. I I, I don't I, I look at I'm, I hear you saying that it's from the Department of Justice, and I'm going to always ride with our folks that live here, work here, and trying to make a difference here. So uh, you know, you are the chief. I'm not against what it is that you are proposing. Um, I just wanted to make sure that once again we know that you know that our data is critical. If I want yes, anybody giving data on this city, sir, I want you to be the one saying that this needs to change, that needs to change, and these are folks that need to have it. So I just want to make sure that our data is put in the right hands. Yes, sir, line three. So this says in the 10 U.S. attorney offices uh, uh, selected for the case study. So, I, so I'm just saying, I, I, what I'm, what, I think what you're looking for the words Department of Justice, I'm saying is talking about the U.S. attorney's offices across the country, which is of course an extension of the Department of Justice. So, what well, so my, my whole thing is I'm just looking at the third party that's not necessarily uh, like this is a nonprofit. This is, you know, I, I don't look at this being seen as something that's government run. When I go on this website, just being trill, you're a black chief. I'm seeing all black people that's in a position right now in the city to help change what's going on in our conditions where we're looking at being the worst. I got the worst rate of homicides in the entire nation. So when I look up and I see somebody that I want to be in a position that's taking this information from this war, looking at these people who are dying, looking at these families who are going to jail for it. I want to make sure somebody that look like me that's looking down on me saying, how can I help pull you up? Mm -hmm. When I go on this website, it's all white folks. I see black individuals staring at boards. I see black people that's looking at other black people. I don't see white people interacting with black folks. I don't see a, a bunch of black folks in suits on this board looking like they finna come to my community and be like, Mr. Bosley, I've seen your statistics. Let's talk about it. I see a bunch of white folks that come in here and say, this is what we do. This is how we move. And this is how I'm going to help you. So, you know, my whole thing is it ain't about you. It's about you because you there. We finally got a chief who I believe has come from this side of town who understands what's going on out here. It's about you being able to have the network that helps you be successful, sir. And if this is a network that we're going to rely on to give us information out of the neighborhoods that are the most profitable in, in the nation, based on us having the worst statistics, we got to make sure folks like you are lifted up when it is time for you to retire and other individuals who are going from here to be able to come back and give us all that information you weren't able to give while you were here. And if we got research institutions that are out here taking our delicate information that look like us, come bring a whole lot of information out here and you look at these boys and they're making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. I don't know what they're making, but I'm seeing all white folks in these videos. That I don't like. That I don't agree with that I'm not cool with. I'll vote for this because you are running it and I can come back to you and hold you accountable as the chief and say, sir, you said these folks are gonna hold us accountable and the Department of Justice are involved. But when I look on the Department of Justice website and shame on them for having all these white folks out here as a research institute and having just black folks in the picture shaking hands with black folks, now, now, once again, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm looking at the website. I'm on it, and I want everybody else to go on it, too. I just posted it up. That's why I wanted to make sure this was the right one. You know, we, we on here doing things that have nothing to do specifically with the corporate governance. You look at the corporate governance, it is go to corporate governance right now on this site. Right now, Peter Harris, president, University of North Carolina system, William A.K. Hawkins, the third leader director of the board, what is it, uh, Emucor, Inc., Representative of the board, Duke University, Vice President uh, Vince E. Price, Vince E. Price, President Duke University, Randall Ramsey, businessman, representative of the board of the University of North Carolina, Peter M. Scott, chairman, 
former FCO president of energy, former president, CEO, president of, I'm a, I'm a former CEO, president and CEO, Progress Energy Service Con uh, Company. Uh, uh, Halida Phoenix Raglan, vice chair, former energy executive, Duke uh, Energy, managing director, H AHK Global Resources, LLC, Warwick Arden, vice president, I mean, executive vice uh, chancellor in Provis, North Carolina State. I'm pretty sure there's a whole lot of black folks that went to North Carolina State. We're going to keep rolling, though. Thomas F. Darden, President and Chief Executive Officer, Cherokee Investment Partners. Tim J. Gabble, President, CEO, RTR, RTI International, the first black man I named. Franklin D. Gilliam, Jr., Chancellor University, North Carolina, Greensboro. Thank you, sir. Let's keep on rolling. Albert A. Ingram. General Partner, Hardness Venture Partners, former CEO, Glaxo Welcome, Sally Cornberg, Provis, Duke University. We can got like five to seven people from Duke University and only one of them black in my city. You want to come here and research on my people like we apes? We ain't no dogs. Peter Lane, Thomas A. Langford, University Professor, to, uh, what is it? Emuritus of Political Science and Public Policy in Provis, Duke University. Terrace. Mag Numson, Vice Chancellor for Research, North Carolina. We had North Carolina and Duke University all over this thing in our city. What a black folks so have black, have white man here. Harold L. Martin Sr. Thank you, Mr. Biracial Man. You just evened it out to two black people being here on this board when I just named a gang of them. Chance, uh, Chancellor of North Carolina and a, 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 a t State University. Thank you, sir. WG um, Champion Mitchell, former CEO Network Solutions. John H. Mullerin, Chairman of uh, Emuritus, USSSA. C. Howard Nye, Chairman of the Board, CEO and President Martin Marietta Materials, Inc. Meg Booth Powell, Founder and CEO of 501 Ventures, LLC. Christy Schaffner, General Partner, Hatchers General Partners, General Ventures Partners. R. Sanders Williams, Professor of Medicine, Senior Advisor for Science oh. and Technology, Duke University, okay. corporate officers. No, all, all this, we, no, no, we're going to go all, through this because all, it's all important because we're talking about specifically who runs the RTI Institute. And if this is relevant, somebody say right now specifically on this board, give me a point of order because this is specific to who we're talking about. We can't point mm -hmm. of order this because I'm just literally saying the board members who exist for this ITR, you keep on going, every one of them are white except for two. All of them, maybe a third with Mr. Harold Morton Sr. And thank you, sir. And there's no disrespect to him. All I'm saying is these individuals come to this city. Sir, you're the blackest chief I ever met. You come from our town. Truth. We ain't never been able to talk like we talking now. Back in the day, they'd hang us. Folks will be outside your house waiting for you. Let somebody come to the north side wait for me right now. I wish they would. I know I don't wish they would. I hope nothing like that happens. But the point that I'm making is, sir, we want to back you in everything that you do. We want you to be as supportive as you possibly can. We want you to win, win, win. To Sarah, or Mayor Jones, you got to win. You can't not win with all this money that we, come and got, that we got coming down the pipeline. But we got to make sure that whatever it is that we're doing, Specifically, that it's supposed to benefit us, especially analytically and when it's data proven, because every progressive on this board, whenever we try to do something, comes and talks about data, 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 data. Uh, if that's what we're going to talk about. That means our data is important. And if our data is important, we got to make sure it's going to the right individuals. We got to make sure that those individuals who are going to take that data and do something with it can come back and turn that data into dollars. And if the Department oh. of Justice is going to do that, bring it. Okay, that's I'll all I'm saying. Yes, sir. I think your point is well taken. Um, let me just try to sum this up uh, so we can move on. So, Chief, um, you said we've been dealing with RTI as a repository since yeah, at least 2008. And so this is not a, a, a new entity as far as us sharing data with, right? Yes, sir. I, I, Autumn, what I, I know that we've been sharing this type of data uh, to whomever the Department of Justice has designated as the repository for the data for 10 years. Okay, and, and, and so the, the agreement is clear 
that we are entering into, entering into an agreement with RTI International, and they are clear that they're going to share that information with the Department of Justice that is Office of um, uh, 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 was a U.S. Attorney's Office That's correct. for this project called Project Safe Neighborhoods, right? That is correct. That's correct. Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure that's clear as I try to wrap this up. And, and I definitely feel Alderman Bosley's passion. Um, and I see some hands up and I want to be able to go back to the chairman to close. But Alderman Howard, I, I'm not sure if your hand ever came back down. Can I just finish uh, real no, quick, I'm sir? Not. I was not done. I know okay. I talked a long time and I do. I just need, I'm 60 seconds and I'm finished, sir. Okay, Alderman Bosley. I'm sorry. Uh, Chief, I just want to ask specifically, since we've had these uh, uh, instances where we've given out this data over these last years, has it brought back potential funding for us to change some of the things that have been uh, analytically proven? Yes, sir. I would, I would say that we have, that the St. Louis Police Department has benefited from information sharing with the Project Safe Neighborhood initiatives. And an example, you know, an example was Foot Beats, but I'm saying again, that uh, when I, first, be when I be first became chief, I know there was a, through Project Safe Neighborhoods, there was a big push on ensuring that officers are following up with a shell casing uh, collection. So I'm saying, so, so they have found that, that, that following up with, the, with trying to determine exactly what gun uh, was used in certain incidents, was this gun being shared across the uh, various incidents, that kind of thing. And so uh, we 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 paid overtime for officers to collect shell cases. So I'm saying, so the thing the things that Project Safe Neighborhoods has done over the years is information would be considered best practice across the country. And so St. Louis Police Department and many major cities across the country share information at the direction of the Department of Justice. In this case, they're saying send it to RTI, which I'm only assuming is a reputable uh, information data crunching location. And, and then give it back to us and then we'll, we'll interpret it and analyze it and share it with the major city police departments across the country. And I believe that participation Thank in this you. program is beneficial to the St. Louis Police Department for that reason. Thank you, sir. I think right now, and I appreciate that, and I know you're genuine, uh, you are genuine, you straight want things to, I appreciate that, sir. All I'm gonna say is with RTI, let's look at them, make sure that those individuals that's not also involved in uh, buying stock in private jails, right? The same individuals that are working to ensure that folks don't go to jail are also involved in ensure that people do. And it's about time where we start having that conversation. I just wanna make sure that any company that thinks they're gonna get information from their city is not gonna be able to sell that to a third party for those individuals who own these institutions to sell that information back on who lives at these posts. Because what you think they do with the census and all this other information is out there, they know where we live in. They know what we got, what we don't got, where the grocery stores are, where the stuff. This is interesting. And this is a time with all these folks having this conversation, me, you, and folks in these positions to win. We gotta have conversations like this publicly to let people know that seriously, you can't come steal our information no more when we know that it's valuable. And we know that there are inf individuals that are looking out for our best interests like yourself, mm -hmm. Chairman Boyd and uh, Chairman Vaccaro, folks that are trying to bring something to ensure that we are able to do something with the analytical data that we provide. But I just at this point want to make sure that whoever it is we providing that data to, we got to start vetting them also, even if they come from the DOJ, because we know that the government specifically, specifically our government, and even though we're in governmental positions, have not been always equitable when it comes Alderman, down to decision I think I, I think I, uh, but one thing I want to emphasize as well, and I think I'm, and, and, and the, the, they're trying to close the, the conversation, but I, I think yes, it's yes. also important to know that this data, this data that we're going to share is readily available. It's, it's not really, it's not, it's not readily available in, in from 20, what, what was the years, for eight years at a time. That's what we got to give it to them for. But I mean, as far as what we're sending them is the same thing you see on our website. Okay, understood. And I, and I appreciate that information. You know, once again, I'm just making sure that these folks are individuals that we also are looking at saying, hey, because, you know, we get to a point in time sometimes when we look back on what it is that we give and we see entities that the government work with and we say, man, we probably shouldn't have gave them something. Even if 50 other cities did, 20 other cities did, you know, this is kind of a point right now where St. Louis is so important to our city. There ain't no norms for us. 
We ain't just giving up stuff because we did it before. We're more important than that to the world at this point. We're more important to the nation. We're more important to the government. And I want to make sure that we all know that you more important. You know, we're one of the most important chiefs in the entire nation right now. Like, I mean, one of the most important chiefs in the entire nation. And we got to start walking like that. So I appreciate you, sir. Once again, I appreciate I'm glad that information is readily available, but it's also something that is very important to us to make sure that we give it to the right folks and make sure that if the government is not giving it to the right folks, we're able to identify that at this point because it has not always historically been utilized in a way where it helps us. And I'm just making sure that at this point in time, we're starting to move in the right foot. Thank you, sir. And I, I yield. Okay. Uh, Chief, let me ask you this. Is, is the information they're asking for going to be sent to them one time during this time period, or are you going to update it every year up to 2023? Yeah, Alderman, apparently, like I said, I, I, was, I mentioned that I think that as far as back we go, that it's, it's, it's kind of an ongoing thing, but this big conglomerate of information is, is not annual. We don't send them this much annually. But they, you know, they keep up with the data, and like I said, again, when they, when they want to make a, a kind of a larger regional study, they ask all the department, the participating departments, to send a block of a block of data that we're sending right now that we're referring to right now. Okay, let me let me add, make this request. Can you send that same information that you're going to send to RTI International to the Public Safety Committee? I, I certainly don't see why not. It's it's, yeah. it's like I say it's, it's, it's yeah it's uh, it's mm -hmm. it's information that's readily available. Right. But 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 again, it's it's, it's generally not available. Eight, eight years at a time. And that's the, no, that's the, no, I understand that. I just want to, you know, make sure that, you know, people feel good about, you know, this information that we're giving, because again, it is public information, but I just think that it will be really important that whatever information you send to them, you just send it to the public safety committee and we just cover all bases. Okay? I don't see, I don't see a problem with that at all. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, you're recognized to close on board bill 165. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, but I, I, I will just close by asking for favorable consideration on Board Bill 165. Mr. Mr. Chairman, would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I, well, sure. I'd like to make a motion. We pass Board Bill 165 out with a due pass recommendation. Second. It's been moved and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Chairman Vicoro. Aye. And I votes. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call it? Well, you already called it, but I see Alderwoman uh, Spencer is on, but she didn't respond, but that's okay. We'll accept um, the roll call as it was. Mr. Chairman, it's back to you. Okay. The only other thing that we have uh, is to discuss the crime stats. And it seems like we did a lot of that during that board bill. Um, I asked Heather Taylor uh, Dr. Dan Isom and the chief to come in. Uh, we had specifically had a lot of questions uh, from members of the committee, I guess it was a, two meetings ago. And um, so I guess we'll go down the list. This will be about the crime stats. Heather, Taylor, are you with us? Chief, is any, anybody with us that, that can share these crime stats with us? Yeah. I don't. I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe that um, that she's on, Alderman. I mean, I mean that was actually the, the 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 first reason for the meeting, and then the mayor's office asked me to throw the other board bill on, and I'm glad you were here to talk about it because, you know, they had more knowledge of it, and just asked if I would do it. And I said, sure, as long as somebody's here to back it up. So uh, if, if Heather H Taylor is not here, are you prepared to put up the crime stats and show us what's going on? I, I'm looking at, I don't, I don't have any, in other words, uh, like sharing my screen, I, I'm not yeah. prepared to, 
to share a crime mm -hmm. data scene uh, screen. Uh, I know that uh, when you first, I think that the, the meeting that you, that you may have had prior to this one, uh, uh, some time ago when you first were, were wondering about crime stats, we had not published them because we were still calculating them. And so right. I believe that, uh, and again, so and 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 all of them, you, Mr. Chairman, you made you made the comment yourself. What what we what we have is all of you know uh, pretty much for the most part all of 2021 data, which is on a new reporting system. So I can now compare, and this is on the website. I can compare January of 2022 to January of 2021. What I cannot do is compare January 2021 to January 2020. And I think that was the confusion. And so it was late getting out, but it is it has since been published since I think you expressed your first concern about it. Okay, well, let me go down the committee. If no one has questions, then we will move to adjourn the meeting. But if someone has questions, then certainly I would like to uh, leave it open to you. So let me go down the line. Vice, Vice Chairman Boyd, or the other option is if, if, if the consensus is we should come back and, and and actually have the stats presented, you know, with, with someone that can actually share, you know. So, uh, uh, Vice Chairman Boyd, I'm gonna start with you and we'll go down the line. Um, I don't have any questions based on the information that's presented, uh, but if there's more of a presentation to be made, maybe we should revisit when we have all the, everybody in place to talk about the information and the, the whole report. I, I agree with that. Um, Alderwoman Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't uh, have any questions because I follow it online for the entire city. And then for my ward, uh, I get updated reports every week. So uh, I feel very comfortable with my knowledge base at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Alderwoman Carol Howard. I don't have any questions. I, I think what we have here is is self-explanatory and um, I can compare that to the data I have for my area. So thank you very much. Other woman, Kara Spencer. She, she, I know she said she had to be in another meeting. She might have left. Uh, Other woman, Pam Boyd. Uh, I don't have any questions. Uh, ironically, we just had Major Cousins at our safety meeting last night, and he gave a report to our ward in regards to homicides. And so we pretty much get communication from the police department. Okay. That, yeah, I, I like uh, Major Cousins. He, he, he does a good job over there. Um, Alderman Bosley? This is on, you're, you're muted, but this is on crime stance. I'm sorry, I don't have any questions. Guys. No question. No question. Okay. I don't. okay. I think I heard no questions from Alderman Bosley, I think. Okay. Uh, Alderman John Muhammad. Alderman Tom Oldenburg. Uh, no questions. Although, Chairman, it would be nice to maybe have uh, Public Safety Director Isom at some point come back and maybe just put a bow on the overall the, the stats and, and where he sees maybe trends going as well in concert with the Chief. Um, but um, that that's not a pressing meeting, but it would be, I think that would be welcome. I'm, I'm planning on bringing them in anyway next week uh, to discuss mask issues and some other issues that I have that didn't make me happy last week. And I, you know, I, I thought I would bring all of them in next week uh, and go through that. Alderman Brett and Ryan. No questions, thank you. Alderwoman Shameen Clark Hubbard. Alderman James Page. Uh, no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Alderwoman Chair Tyus. 
Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No questions. I follow mine online also. And the chief knows I'll reach out to him also if I need to. <laughs> and he's pretty accessible. So I'm and he's from my ward originally. So he has to answer me, even though he's moved away. He still has to. <laughs> I, I think he does a good job. Of answering. He, even when I call to scream and yell and cuss, and I've been known to do all of that, he still will answer the phone when he knows why I'm calling. And it's not pleasant when I dial. It starts off with a lot of bad language, and most people would have hung up, but that's okay. <laughs> Alderwoman Dwayne Evans. And Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have no questions. I just want to thank uh, Chief Hayden for being here and supplying uh, information. Uh, to this committee. And with that said, that's all I have to say. Okay. And I saw thank Alderman, you. I'm sorry, thank you. I saw Alderman Dan Gunther. Alderman Gunther, did you have anything you wanted to say or bring up? No questions, just listening. Okay. Am I missing anyone else that is here that's not on the on the um, in the meeting on the board? I see none. Chief, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, at this point, we'll take a motion to adjourn the meeting until we have another one. So. Motion to adjourn. Second. Um, and, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So Aye. We'll, adjourn. we'll see you next, next week. <laughs>